All right, here we go. Let's watch this while we wait. Why is socialism so popular? <laughs> because it's based. That's why. Less than 10 years ago, Ace you man, couldn't mean. refer Come to on, socialism joke. in a positive way and hope Dinesh to D'Souza? Oh! Oh, yes! Oh, my God! Dinesh D'Souza! Eternal cringe lord. Dinesh D'Souza is, is a... He is a Republican, a pathetic Republican uh, poster. One of the funniest cringe lords on the internet. Oh my god, it's so good. Convicted felon, true. True, he's a tax evader. <laughs> Let's watch it. Let's. Oh, this is going to be so good. This is going to be so good. Have a good. career in American politics. Socialism was referred to as the S word. Now it no, is it affirmed wasn't. either explicitly or implicitly by just imagine imagine this my, by the way this is one of the guys who considers himself a part of the intellectual dark web imagine believing that an ideology should be labeled by the s word when you call yourself a member of the intellectual dark web what a fucking loser dude what a loser oh yeah good idea thank you Thank you, Rakasan. You're you're the you're you're helping me out so much. This is so great. Oh my god, he he's so this is so funny on so many fucking oh, I fucking can't wait. Here we go. We got the sources. Let's see. In one of his books, he talks about his weekend stays at a minimum security prison and says he met a black guy who converted to conservatism and told Dinesh he wasn't racist. Nice. He got so he got his N word pass from a from a friend in jail. Nice. Nice. You know that's what it's all about with these Republican types. Just about everyone on the left. And amazingly, given socialism's record of failure, the socialists seem to be gaining. Ah, yes. Pop. Ah, the. Oh, the classic graphs. I love the PragerU graphs. Nothing labeled here. Popularity up over time. Oh my god. This is, look at this fucking shit. Meaning ground. Popularity. Wait, that doesn't make sense. This is not even correct. Wouldn't it be popularity here? Because the line going up is, it's going higher on the popularity chart. They didn't even make a correct graph. This doesn't even make sense. Amazing. Why? What makes socialism so attractive to so many? Socialism, according to its proponents, is more democratic and therefore more moral than capitalism. True! Leftist filmmaker Michael Moore explains it for us. Democratic socialism means everyone has a seat at the table and everybody True. gets a slice of the pie. The nice. famed socialist writer Irving Howe wrote something similar in his 1982 autobiography. We believe that the democracy in our political life should also be extended deeply into economic life. True. That's correct. It should be. It's funny how it's funny how we supposedly live in a democracy, but we spend most of our time in businesses where we have zero say at all. We do all of our work in corporations that are functional autocracies. You go into work, you don't have any actual recourse against your boss and that's especially true if you're a gig worker if you're a gig worker you're less than chaff you may as well be a speck of dust they do not care life the basic idea here is that socialism is vindicated through its roots and popular consent if a majority of people working through their elected representatives declares something to be a public entitlement, say free college or free health care, then they are justified in extract. Yeah. Yeah, basically, more or less. Yeah. More, more or less. Yeah. Acting resources from those who create wealth to pay for it. As Nathan Robinson argues in his book, Why You Should Be a Socialist, hey, the Robinson. moral imperative is to place the economy under the control of the people. I mean, right? Yes. The goal is that the economy is most controlled by individuals. Now, how you go about doing that, of course, there's all kinds of different things. There's all kinds of different ways to accomplish this. But I mean, that's true, though. Even, even Republicans would claim that, right? 
even Republicans will claim that, yeah, we just believe that you should have the, uh, you know, the economy should be under control of, of people. We just think the way you do that is by living in an ANCAP society where the first person to make money can uh, literally hire an army to take you over and turn all your children into child slaves. So, yeah, there's a very different outcome, though. Yeah. Sounds good, at least superficially, until you dig a bit below the surface. First, what direct control do the people really have over any government institution? Is that a real question? Is that a real question? I'm under Republicans, none. What control do the British people have over the National Health Service? Quite a lot, actually. They actually have quite a lot of control over the National Health Service. And in fact, as I understand it, the NHS is really, really popular in Britain. It's still popular to this day. It's really weird. So what this argument is, what this debate is, this is sounding like they're going to actually argue against democracy. Not that whether which one is more de democratic, but they're going to argue that basically democracy is bad and therefore capitalism is better because it's more democratic in the sense that if the word democratic means good, but the actual tenets of democracy are bad. If that made any sense. What control do Americans have over the Department of Motor Vehicles or the U.S. Post Office? Quite a lot. I mean, depends. An individual American can't, like, disassemble the post office. But Americans can vote, say, for Joe Biden, somebody who will stop disassembling the post office. Or they could vote for Donald Trump um, and careen the country off of a cliff. That sort of thing. The answer, of course, is none. Given its practical impossibility, genuine popular control over government institutions is a mirage. Ah, like I said, they are going to argue against democracy, against the actual tenets of democracy. What they mean here in this video, capitalism or socialism, which is more democratic? The title of this video should be capitalism or socialism, which one is more good? That's what they mean. They're trying to use the word democratic to mean good. Democratic is when good thing I like happen. Not democratic is when bad thing I don't like happen. But democracy has a meaning. And what they're doing right now is they're arguing that technically democracy isn't possible. And therefore, socialism is bad because it's because they're using democratic in exchange for the word good. That's what they mean. But they're actually arguing that the, the actual tenets that make up democracy are bad. I know that's confusing, but that's how they do these things. This is fucking mental pretzeling. Second, what if 51% of Americans vote to confiscate the resources of a single person, say, Bill Gates? Hey, good thing that's not how democracy works. Good thing that's not how American democracy works. Good thing there's things called proportional representation. We have all kinds of systems to ensure that this doesn't happen. But guess what? This is actually more accurate to what happens under the Electoral College. But it's all right. Americans vote to confiscate the resources of a single person, say, Bill Gates. Does that make it right? Yes. Under an authoritarian socialist government, a single dictator seizes the fruits of your labor. Everyone is against that. Under democratic socialism, a majority does. The end result is the same. What? what? Wait, what? Under, under authoritarian socialists, a dictator can steal all your shit. And under democratic socialism, everybody can vote to say we need to re reorganize our e economy. And those two are supposedly the same? What? This is actually like, this is actually like, what we're watching here is doublethink. This is live doublethink. Live. You've been robbed. The fundamental problem with democratic socialism, however, is its assumption that in a free market system, the economy is not under the control of the people. This is exactly the opposite of how things work. Let me explain. Each of us are not only citizens, we are also consumers. These Ah, yes. Remember, humans should be boiled down to two categories. You are both a citizen and a consumer. If you stop consuming, you are no longer human. If you stop being a citizen, you are no longer human. Ah, yes. Republican mindset at its base. 
There are overlapping categories. Every citizen is a consumer, and every consumer is also a citizen. Consumer, the consumer like the citizen, I'm consuming, is a voter. As citizens, we vote once every two or four years. As consumers, we vote many times a day. Ah, the old voting with your dollar. R remember, guys, remember. It's okay to talk about how literally it's impossible to have a democratic system because too many people means that you can't actually control government. But it's definitely not delusional to believe that your dollar actually equals a vote. Hey, how many times have you gone to a store and said, these hot dogs aren't fresh. That's it. I'm taking my business elsewhere. And all of the employees literally ignored you or called the cops to tell you to go away. Do, you, do people really think that you can vote with your dollar? Holy shit. What a stupid, what, a, what an infantile worldview you must have in order to believe that you, that you can vote with your dollar to corporations that literally don't give a shit at the best of times. Unbelievable. The citizen votes with a ballot, which costs them nothing except the inconvenience of going to the polls. The consumer votes with the inconvenience which Republicans are trying to make more inconvenient. His money, which costs him a lot, all the time and effort he put in to earn. Ah, unless you inherit a lot of money, that's a problem. What happens if what happens if most of the people in in society who have the most money don't actually put in time or effort to get all of that money, and they're therefore able to determine the direction of society despite not putting in time or effort into that society? Wow, almost sounds like America in 2020, doesn't it? And that money. Only a fraction of citizens are eligible to vote at the ballot box, but every consumer votes in the marketplace, even felons, even children. Illegal aliens cannot vote for political candidates, but they too vote with their money. Moreover, citizens participate in a system of representative democracy. Their views are filtered through the politicians who represent them. Consum yeah, that's called representative democracy. Yeah, that's how it works. That's a pragmatic... A pro what? What the fuck? Consumers, by contrast, vote in a system of direct democracy. If you prefer an Audi to a... Oh, oh, yes. I forgot. The most obvious direct democracy, which is where you can choose, you can directly influence how corporations act with your single dollar. Again, this is fantasy land. Like, I can't even get, like, I don't know who could watch this video and come come away from this not thinking that it's anything but a literal fantasy. Where, where have you ever actually been able to meaningfully impact a corporation with how you spend your money? Yeah, I think that would be best, Gina. We should probably split these into three different segments. Um, if that's fine. I can edit them all up and then upload them in rapid succession. That way we have little PragerU ones. I think that's probably a good idea because my goal is to get these seen by as many people as possible. I really want to take down every single PragerU video I can. And I'm going to start doing this with Tim Pool too. Just so you know. Just so you all know. All of you who are here right now are witness. I am angry at these people. And I am going to be making takedowns of these videos as much as possible in the future. Because I'm tired of this disinformation spreading everywhere. And we need, again, a swarm of content creators taking down the absolute bullshit that they churn out every single day until we plug those pipes and we can have a better fucking world. But until then... It's nose to the grindstone for this demon mama. We're gonna fucking break down this bullshit propaganda. I am going to expose myself to the radiation of conservative thought and fire it back at them, hopefully. Anyway, let's continue. Lexus or the Apple iPhone to the Samsung Galaxy, you don't have to elect some other guy to exercise these preferences. You do it directly yourself by paying for them. Ah, uh, yes. Remember. Remember when you are able to literally vote and it's definitely not a corporation that has a layer of frontline employees, managers, middle managers, corporate executives, corporate decision makers, an infinite amount of, of uh, consulting firms, uh, nested parent companies and subsidiaries, partnerships, and laws. Yes, this is what we call direct democracy. Incredible incredible absolutely incredibly stupid you you genuine i don't understand how do they how many views does this stupid video have 
This video has 60,000 views over 10 hours and 9,000 of them liked it. This is, this right here is a graveyard of the mind. A graveyard of the mind right down here. The comments on PragerU videos is where you go to witness what a dying, br what dying brains look like. Holy shit. Here we see the secret of how those billionaires like Jeff Bezos got so rich. We made them rich. The inequality. Yes, yes. Choosing bet between two functionally identical products, which are completely dishonest to you because they can say whatever the fuck they want and skirt around any sort of re re regulation. Ah, yes. This is what democracy looks like. You can choose between a hundred. You can choose between a hundred different sodas. All of them are made with corn syrup. Every single one is made of corn syrup, and you can choose between a hundred of them. You have so many choices. In the USSR, you could only have one soda made of corn syrup and one made of something else. Oh, wait, maybe corn syrup was banned. Oh, wait, corn syrup is banned in nearly every other country except for America because it literally kills you. Ah, oh, shit. Ah, oh, shit. The that socialists complain about is the result of popular mandate. Want fewer billionaires? Stop buying their stuff. You want... Want fewer billionaires? Stop eating food. Is it a problem that every single grocery store is owned by one like one or two grocery store companies and the only way you can possibly get food in the country is by buying from one of these two places? Well, just move out into the woods, purchase a large uh, a large plot of land, grow it up, uh, plant the seeds, become an amazing farmer, be able to harvest enough food on the land that you have to sustain yourself and your family, and stop buying food from the corporations that have a monopoly over the food industry. It's as simple as that, five head. Just completely change everything about your life. That's amazing. Just Anprim, just return to monkey, five head. Just stop buying food. You don't have to. If you don't want them to be a billionaire, you stop paying $5 a week for sandwiches. That will make them stop being a billionaire in 9,000 years. Yeah, we probably can. That sounds good. Markets work not through greed or exploitation, but by satisfying our wants. And the most successful entrepreneurs are those who anticipate our wants even before we have them. Ah, yes. Such incredible entrepreneurs like Jeff Bezos who predicted that we would need to buy things at a slightly cheaper rate um and so he leveraged an incredible amount of starting capital so that he could undercut other businesses that were already doing the same thing but at a slightly cheaper rate while leveraging losses so that he could take over the industry yeah amazing Ah, yes, remember? We all talked about the fucking Ryan's World toy boxes. What a- Wow! So amazing! No one wrote Steve Jobs asking him to make a phone that took pictures, allowed people to text messages, and listen to music. He conceived it and built it. He stole somebody's idea? Yeah, cheap-ass toys in a cheap-ass safe. I want to see what their source page for this. We'll look at it afterwards. Before we knew, we couldn't live without it. Mark no, it's funny. You know what's really funny? We can't live without it because guess what? Nearly every job requires you have a smartphone these days. Weird how that works. It's almost like corporations which have a vested interest in you buying more phones make it essential for you to have a phone to do everything. But they make no effort to make that cheaper for you. It's weird. Have you ever tried getting a job without a phone? Did you have you ever uh, filled out a job application where they have a question on there that says, do you have reliable transportation to this job? And if you say yes, and then they ask you, do you own a car? And then you say no, then they just do not hire you. Weird. Weird how that works. Have you... um? Have you ever considered that, oh, you, in order to work for all of these amazing gig jobs that they were just talking about, they were just talking about in a video about gig jobs, every single one of them requires an app that you need to have on a smartphone. You can't use, you can't do Uber without a smartphone. Isn't that strange? Hmm. Isn't it weird that you can't do Lyft without a smartphone? It's almost like the product is necessitated by the society that we've built around it. And that if we look bigger, we can build a better society. Weird how that works, huh?
market economies involve a level of popular participation and democratic consent that politics can only envy. We yep, it's the coconut dick sucking thing. You land on a desert island, you land on a desert island, and one guy got there before you and gathered all of the coconuts into a giant pile. And he says, ah, you have a choice. You can starve on the beach or you can suck my dick and I'll give you a coconut. You have a choice. You have the freedom. You got to participate in the market economy. Just suck the guy's dick. Just suck his dick. You have a choice, don't you? You could choose to starve. Need to extend democracy from the political to the economic sphere. We already have it. Ah, yes. And the moral ground. We definitely of have an incredible amount of say over the products that go on the on the shelves. I too love the ability to wait a minute wait a minute hey has anybody in chat has anybody in chat ever ensured that a product ended up on a shelf how many people here actually had an impact on on any products that appeared on their shelf anybody remember that i've tried to bro break open a coconut i know how to do it yep I don't know. I don't know. Not sounding like many people have had an impact. Not sounding like uh, many people uh, have uh, fucking put any products on shelves. I certainly haven't. Sure, I've certainly had to buy a lot of food, though, because, you know, you need food to live. Oh, you put it. Oh, OK, so you worked as a stalker once. Yeah, that counts. Sure. Y that was very democratic of you to put those things out for everybody, giving them the choice to buy the cheese that they need to survive. Oh, it's okay, Hyun. Don't worry about it. Like that of our political system is in the will of the people. Yeah, in of the course. latter case, a will expressed only on election day. In the former case, a will expressed deliberately, emphatically, constantly. We uh. don't need socialism because we already have something more moral and more democratic. It's called capitalism. I'm totally. So what did I say? His argument. His argument was that democracy doesn't actually exist, but if it did, capitalism would be the best at it. Literally the exact same thing that I said. Literally predicted the entire thing. I've never seen this video, by the way. Fresh. All of these, all three of these videos I watched fresh with you today. Fucking unbelievable. Dinesh D'Souza is, is an embarrassment, and that was as stupid as I thought it was going to be. Holy shit. Yeah, they didn't do a Vuvuzela. That's surprising. That's surprising, honestly. Incredible. All right, so we are going to be going on the panel in 10 minutes. Oh, yeah, let's check the sources. Let's check their sources on this one. Facts and sources. Okay, proponents of socialism claim. So this is just sources for the claim. The fundamental flaw of democratic socialism is, is the assumption that the economy in a free market is not under the control of the people. Oh my god, here we go. I'd love to see how they prove this. Wait, this is the exact quote. Let's see what this source is. It's one of the sources is literally his article. Look at this. One of his sources is literally his own article. An opinion article is his source. The fundamental flaw of democratic socialism is the assumption that the economy in a free market is not under the control of the people. View source, click. Newsweek, Dinesh D'Souza, opinion article. This is the sources. Capitalism and democracy are inherently linked, both placing power of the country in the hands of its citizens. Let's see. Another opinion piece. This is another opinion piece. This is just an opinion piece by Michael Novak. Let's see. Let's find another one. Capitalism leads to economic democracy. Socialism always leads to the economic dictatorship of the elite. Oh, wait. What's this one? Let's see what this one is. Here we go. When you A Milton Friedman YouTube video? Are you for, for real? Wait a minute. Hold on a second. This one links to the video. This source right here links to their own video at the top of the page. Literally. 
I just watch. I'm gonna click it again. Ready? Click. It goes to this video. Holy fucking shit. That is a new low. Holy motherfucking shit. That is a brand new low. Literally links to the video that's at the top of the page. Oh my god. All of these are just opinion pieces. None of these are based on anything. Oh, they- look at this! They've got Venezuela! They did do a Venezuela, they just didn't say it in the video. Another opinion piece. Holy shit. The more capitalism, the less socialism you need. Holy motherfucking shit. National Review. Half of these are from the National Review. Who's this guy? Okay. Literally unbelievable. Actually unbelievable. Holy shit. Okay. Well, we have to go and get ready for a panel. So if you will pardon me for just one second.